Hi folks, welcome to another Wednesday widget. I think this is uh, number 25. I'm going to start numbering them now, WW25 in the episode. Um, great to be back. It's just crazy busy here. We have the new lathe come in, as you can see, uh, working on setting up the tool changer. It's not, uh, not ready yet because we had an emergency job come in yesterday and then I got the flu. Today's the first day I feel back, so um, all is well, but uh, we're kind of drinking out of a fire hose these days. But never going to miss the Wednesday widget, folks. Uh, this is a great one because it's also sort of a choose your own adventure. This is a part off of GrabCAD. If you don't know what GrabCAD is, you're really missing out. It's a repository of uh, open source or free, so far as I know. I don't believe there's any payment ever required. And there are CAD models for anything from vehicles and engines to machines to firearms to you, you name it. It's incredible how much is out there. I usually choose the SOLIDWORKS filter so that I can actually download SOLIDWORKS files. And it's another way that I actually have learned to teach myself more advanced things in CAD because I can go through the uh, design tree and look at how other people have built and designed things in SOLIDWORKS. But incredible resource. This part's for a customer that's uh, done some work for before, and I believe he's building his own automation or CNC type of equipment. I think he's doing a fair amount of it on his own, which is great, but he needs a few things machined, and I think this is awesome. And again, it goes back to what a great time we live in, because here's a person that's not supposed to be able to do this kind of stuff, and they're able to run with it and use things like GrabCAD to help get their project done. So. Uh, we'll take a very, very quick look in SOLIDWORKS, but mostly we're going to do some sprut cam, talk about the operations, fixturing, design, and sorts, and then we're going to hop over to the Tormach mill and whip her up. So like I said, the amazing thing about GrabCAD is we download this free SOLIDWORKS file and we have the actual SOLIDWORKS build, which to me is a lot more valuable than just having the IGES. We don't need to do anything with it right now. However, we are, when we flip the part, going to use a modified version of this to create our workpiece in SprutCam, which will be really helpful, so stay tuned for that. Let's dive into SprutCam, though. Now, uh, before we start, if you guys are just enjoying this video, then by all means, go, you know, listen along, watch along, and enjoy it. But if you're trying to learn how to be a better machinist, what I would really encourage you to do is the li there's a link for this part in the video description. Download it and, and hit pause now and go think about how you would fixture it and how you would cut it in the order of operations. How many fixturing and setups do you need? One, two, three, more. Uh, I think that putting your own twist on it, and there is no right way, um, but there are probably better ways, will really help you rather than just watch me uh, come up with what I think is the best answer. And you know, this is a two part, I gotta make two of these for the customer. You know, I don't put crazy amounts of thought into optimizing the, um, the tool path. And in fact, sometimes I will take a longer or slower or less efficient or more fixturing setup because at the end of the day, it, I wanna get these things done and I also wanna minimize risk. I'll take greater risk if I can prove out that it's worth it setting up for you know a run of 100 of these. Anyways, we've got the part set up. And if you notice, I've got the um, zero set uh, at the top here for Z and the back side here for the Y, but the X, I've got it centered in between the part, which is a little bit unusual for me. And let's take a look at the actual work pieces now and I'll explain why. So here's, here's how I demarcate to myself that the top, this face, and then the center is my X, Y, Z, zero. But the reason is that the stock I had on hand was two and a half inches wide, and that's the OD of the part. And if you put our brand new Mitutoyu calipers on it, I actually see it's about 14, it's getting a little less, yeah, about 11 or 12 thou over. That'll be fine for this job. Um, you gotta be careful, I had some extrusion yesterday on an important job that was two thou under, and that was a bummer. That caused a little bit of a problem, but um, this will be fine, but rather than worry about having to set the left side as six thou under, we're gonna, when you'll see when we're on the Tormach, just find the two sides and set the, those two sides as the outside dimensions, and that'll put us right in the middle, and it should clean up both of those faces. Six thou is plenty of material to work with. So today, we're gonna walk through the cam I already created versus creating it all from scratch. So the first thing I'm gonna do is this hole here. We're gonna try something not necessarily new, but different. We're gonna machine it or drill it first with a half inch drill. And that's gonna give us a uh, full depth 
hole, and then, we'll, then what we're going to do, I'm peck drilling it there, then what we're going to do is we're going to water line it with our half inch Maritool rougher, and we're going to try it at a full depth pass, actually just a hair more, and we're going to see using, and maybe I'll be a little bit more conservative on the step over, maybe we'll do, uh, you know, 12% just to make sure, 60 thou at a full depth cut. Uh, but the idea here is trying to use the full length of the tool and then obviously we don't have to plunge then because we've got the pre-drilled hole. Now another little trick I, I learned, I think it's a trick, uh, maybe you guys already know this, but in the roughing water line, um, actually a couple tricks, I used to always select the, fa the faces, but what I've learned is if you select the faces it becomes difficult or impossible to force the cut to go below the geometry of the face. So instead, if you double click the line and choose job zone, you can then override the depth by choosing a deeper bottom level. And we'll just go down to 51. We don't need to go more than 10 thou below. Now the other trick that I learned, the one I really meant to mention, is this. Um, and I don't know if it's even in the parameters window. I, you have to scroll through down here. Um, where is that? Yeah, so we're obviously drilling the hole in the center of the uh, clamp. In roughing water line, if you then choose that same hole, it will force the tool to plunge down directly in the center of the hole. Um, and it's an interesting little thing, and it's, and it's quite important here because I do want it to go right down the middle just like that. Now, in theory, I should maybe drill with a little bit bigger than a half inch end mill because this first little part there might be, uh, might have a hard time to evacuate the chips, but well, you guys get the idea. So we'll do that clamp hole we're leaving, um, or I'll walk you through the parameters really quick. So half inch roughing end mill, 2800 RPM, 20 inches a minute. So moving decently fast, no lead in or lead out. We're going down to 2.51. We're leaving 10 thou, because again, it's a roughing end mill. We'll clean it up here in a second. And climb milling it with 12% uh, of the tool diameter step over. I think that's all that we need to worry about. Now, another difference is sometimes I used to just use a 2D contouring to profile the outside of these parts, but it'll be much smarter to use a roughing water line. And we don't want to work on the inside of this anymore, so we just double click the line and choose restrict zone. That puts the red thing in there. And then if we have if we have negative point, say five five, chosen as the bottom level, all that it's going to do is rough down to negative point five five. And again, quite oops, quite similar, um, quite similar tool path, same speeds and feeds. Maybe I, I guess I went 18 instead of 20. Um, 10 thou uh, radial left and climbing it a little bit of a heavier step over because we don't have any, um, we're basically making an open cut. We don't have to worry about it chip loading as much because we're not slotting effectively. So um, real quick, we'll run that. You can see it trims off the sides there. Boom, boom, boom. And good, oops, we moved ahead already. So then we're gonna use a 5 16 to 32, I believe. Yeah, 5 16 Lakeshore Carbide, beautiful end mill to clean up the outside, 5100, 15 inches a minute. We'll come down 51, say. And I don't think there's anything else here. Yep, now, I don't really care to start and stop the tool at this slot here because we, this slot doesn't exist yet. So what we can do to cheat is instead of selecting the two curves like I have here, we'll delete the second curve and then we'll just drag this guy down like so. We'll do the same thing, clean up the circle, same tool. I think I've got a, uh, zoom in here, I think I've got a little bit of a ramp in there which should be nice. And then we use a 3 16 end mill to clean up, or not clean up, to create that little inlet there. Uh, I'll walk you through the speeds and feeds on that. It's tool 21. 5100 and I'm going slow, six. We're gonna take it in 70 thou depth of passes. Again, conservative, but it's a two flute 316, so I no need to crush it. We'll take five thou, clean up at the bottom, and that should be it. And then 
After the part is machined, we'll create this slot um, probably on the DeWalt multi-cutter. It's actually what I use to cut that uh, raw material we just took a look at. I love this tool because the bandsaw is great. The bandsaw will be cheaper uh, um, in the long run or on high volume, but gosh, you know, Jared wasn't here this morning. I'm backed up. I've got so much work to do. And putting them on the DeWalt, man, I can make these cuts so, so quick to get raw material ready. I really love this. I actually did a whole review on it, but I've had this all now for, geez, a number of months, six months, and I freaking love the thing. Love it. If it breaks, I will order one within five minutes of it breaking. Um, I, I don't carry it. At this point, if it broke, I'd be happy because I got my money's worth. It is phenomenal. So, We'll probably use it. Um, the kerf on the blade is only 90 thou. This technically is 125 thou pocket, but for a split, split line clamp, it should be fine. Um, and so what we're gonna do is use a tool 25, which is my 90 degree mill drill, um, which I got modeled up right here at 5100 and pretty slow at 20, yeah, 20 thou depth. We're just gonna use that to create ourselves a little line. So let's render this whole thing save it and we'll do uh, actually we'll see we'll draw simulate that real quick you can see boom that'll just give me a guideline for the saw so we'll do a real quick sped up view of the whole thing drill rough out the circle rough out the profile and clean it up profile clean up the circle make a little pocket and then our guideline great Okay, save that. Now let's open up op two. We're just gonna flip the part, um, like so. Flip the part 180 across the Y axis and we're just gonna hog out all this extra material. Boom. I'm gonna do it with that same tool 11, my half inch rougher at 2800 and we're gonna go 20 inches a minute. And I'm doing it with a, um, oops, where is that? Yeah, roughing it to out 1.6 and 0.1 inch steps. We're gonna do it in two depth of pa cut passes, so it's a full inch to the bottom, but we'll do it in half inch steps. And then we'll clean it up at the end with my um, tool 100 for me is a high, very high quality 3 8 carbide end mill that will do it uh, 5108 with, uh, that should only have 10 thou. And we're gonna cut it, instead of cutting it at one inch deep, we'll go, come up two thou. So in theory, that will leave a 2,000th tiny little lip right here in the corner, but customer will never see it or won't have any certainly negative impact and it prevents you from seeing a cut line or even a ridge right here. And uh, I remember reading about it. Somebody sent me a Boeing PD, uh, PowerPoint on machining stuff that was so complex that I didn't even come close to understanding most of it. But one of the things they talked about was, was doing that, um, not even so much for the aesthetic, but apparently when you don't have the end mill touching on the bottom face, it can change the, you know, some crazy terminology, you know, static load and face mill deflection and blah, blah, blah. And it made, it just kind of made sense. And I've actually had great uh, results doing it. So we'll do a quick render of this guy. Nothing crazy here, folks. We'll probably fast forward through a lot of this on the machining side. So again, half inch deep, 10, 100 thou step overs. And then the very final one will be a full depth, or I think I'm doing it in two. Um, yeah, there you go, 10 thou cleanup, boom, and boom. Okay, and then finally for op three, We've got the part sort of situated upright, if you will. So it'll be look like so. Now here is where I wanted to go back into SolidWorks for a second, because what we want to do is machine this um, here with an end mill to get this flat. And if we didn't have uh, a custom workpiece, uh, Sprute Cam is just going to create a giant block in here. And when you go to machine this, you're not going to see anything because there's this block around here. So all that we need to do is go back into SolidWorks and if we poke through our design tree or whatever this thing's called, we can see these features and if we just right click and do suppress, let's see here, what else? Boom, boom, boom. We don't need any of these, we really don't want any of this stuff. We wanna make it seem like it's the, and we can get rid of the slot too. Oh no, we can't do that, but that's actually enough. So now what we do is we save this as an IGIS and then 
in Sprout Cam, we just choose Workpiece. I'm going to deselect it so you can see. I've already imported it, um, but you select Workpiece and then just go to File. But if you then import that I just file right here under the Workpiece, it creates that, and you can see it doesn't have. It'll represent what the model will actually show, and then now we can create. Uh, here, I'm actually turn the Workpiece off, so we don't we don't want to see it except when we simulate. So use a quarter inch, yeah, 231 quarter inch end mill just to clean up uh, this little pocket here. And we'll whole machine, that's just a spot, drill number seven, that's the pre-drill, for the pre-tap drill rather. Now we'll drill out the top part um, as a clearance because we only are gonna tap the bottom part. And then we'll use that same letter F drill to drill these two, which again are clear clearance holes for quarter 20s. I'm gonna actually tap the part offline. To me, it's not worth the risk because I've got too much height here um, and it's only two parts. If it were more, I would absolutely figure out how to tap it on the machine. But um, again, it goes back to a risk thing. On the last op of a three op part, I'm not gonna risk a tap hiccup uh, for something like that. Okay, let's throw our work piece in here. I usually just do one smack of the hammer, kind of let the hammer do the work and those parallels are nice and snug. We'll grab our Heimer. I've had a lot of folks ask me, oops, gotta turn the compressor on. I've had a lot of folks ask about the Heimer and how it's used. I'll, I'll do a little video on it. I also owe everybody a video, I also owe everybody a video on my CNC coolant system and talking about the various options there. So there's my X0. I will uh, get those two videos out here, hopefully. The coolant one I, I really need to get out because I had, I don't know why, so many people ask me on that one. Um, let me stop talking here, pay attention to my, how I zero it. So here's our Y0. Boom, hit zero there. Now for the X, quite simple. Come to the left side, find zero. Now hit X0 in mock. Come over to the other side of the part, sc scroll to zero on the Heimer, like so, and then in the mock screen for X, just hit, which will say about 2.5, a little more, Hit, just hit divide by two, divides that dimension in half, and it sets the perfectly middle part of the workpiece to right where we want it. Just jog around, do a sanity check. Yep, it looks good, perfect. Let's throw in our first tool, which is a half inch twist drill. And I love the uh, seeds and seeds on this one. I don't know what I did, but I just always felt like I've got this one nailed down. So I'm gonna get my enclosure tied up here and then we'll hit rock and roll.